Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless it. Hi, thanks for tuning in to Armor of God. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us, and hopefully you will be edified with what we've put together for you here. Well, I'm sure we're quite familiar with people associating the Freemasons with the Catholic Church, and you've got to admit, when we listen to some of these theories about the Freemasons in the Church, it can get pretty wild. In fact, it will be really helpful to look at some of the popular symbols in the church that people think belongs to the Freemasons from the beginning. Such as this one, the eye within the triangle. They take religious symbols and, and they desecrate them. And this is why people think that masonry is everywhere in the church, because they see Masonic symbols that are really Christian symbols. The Trinity, the triad comes from the church. The all-seeing eye was God the Father. But now the Masons take that and they pervert it. Or the peace symbol. The Masons took it from the church and made it their symbol like it does with other things. The crucifix. You know where the peace symbol comes from? It comes from the cross of Christ. Mm -hmm. That the Masons during a seminar ceremony in a circle with a pentagram take and turn upside down, upside down and break the transepts. That's the peace symbol. Or even the popular depiction of the devil with two horns. An image of two beasts, one coming from the sea, one came from the earth. And one had two horns. Uh, one of the, these beasts had um, power of the first beast because the first beast was wounded and gave, gave its authority to the second beast. And um, this beast had horns and the horns represent amplification. Back in the Old Testament, when they wanted everyone to be notified, they blew the horn. Mm -hmm. What's today's amplification if not social media? This is what Satan is using through the media to pronounce these evil principles and examples through cinema, television, newspapers, internet. These are the horns of the Old Testament, social communication, internet. And the beast is using this. And um, this beast and this piece of a, speaks of a false prophet with two horns, which represents ecclesiastical Freemasonry, because the bishop, the pope, has a mitre with two horns, one in front and one in the back. In the Old Testament, they had it too. And Moses, according to the writings of Anne Catherine Emmerich, had two little horns on his head. She said he had these little protrusions from his skull coming out. That's why when da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo sculptured Moses, which is now found that sculpture in St. Peter in chains in Rome, which is just above the Via Cavour, the Via Cavour, a street that goes to St. Mary Major. He's sculptured with two horns because that's what apparently tradition said he had, he appeared. So the, the priesthood has these two horns representing the authority of Christ. Satan who apes God has horns as well. So the horns didn't begin with Satan, they began with Christ. But for this video, there's another subject that I'd like to share with you from Father Joseph Iannuzzi as well. During one particular live stream, he was asked to comment about the infiltration of priests who are Freemasons in the Catholic Church. And I met a priest, an archbishop actually, and an ambassador to the Vatican, who spoke of this very thing you're sharing with me, of an infiltration going on. And I can tell you, as a matter of fact, that which only... Um, that which people who write on these things only know by second or third hand sources. I know from first hand sources. And this Vatican Freemason infiltration, first and foremost, is a very thorny issue because number one, it's a secret society. So no one's going to come out and say, I'm a, I'm a Mason. And you, so how are you going to know? Have there been reports of infiltration in the church by and large um, of this, this uh, sect. According to approved prophetic literature, there has been this infiltration, but it's not on the scale people are exaggerating. It's not on the scale. I've read false prophecies, false seers that are posted on false websites claiming to be Catholic, and there are no theologians on this website guiding it. What a surprise saying that the church is going to hell in a handbasket and Freemasons are in control and the Pope is surrounded by Freemasons and he's a Freemason and he's going to die on a certain date and all these things always never come to fruition, they're failed prophecies. But there is, there may very well be this element. So we know that 
if there is this element, which I believe there is within the church, this infiltration, this evil, it's a very minuscule number compared to the others. Now, you may say, wait a minute. Did not Pope Pius XII say there's more sin today than ever in the world before? Yes, he did. Does not Jesus reveal in certain approved prophetic messages that are approved by the church that there is more evil today than ever before? Yes, he does. So then how can I say that this is a very small number? Well, I'm talking about authorities in the church, not people in the world. Yes, there's more sin in the world among all the people than ever before, okay? Just look around you, look at the television programs, the cinema, the, the magazines, the internet, what's available. This has never been heard of before. So there's this global sinfulness. And according to Zechariah, the Old Testament prophet, two thirds of the human race are going to be annihilated, which may suggest that two thirds are evil. Could very well suggest that. But within the church, it's not two thirds are, of the priests are swept away in bishops. That doesn't mean that. So I know from my travels, from my preaching and teaching that the majority are good. They are good people. They may not all be tuned into these prophetic messages. No, they may not all be promoting these things. No, but they're not all involved in these evil secret societies. No, it's a small number, small percentage. But even though small, they have a lot of power and they wield that power very well. Um, so when it comes to Freemasonry infiltrating the church, we know that this is a reality, but it's a small percentage, but they wield a lot of power, these people, okay? We know that. Eight, eight popes have condemned any Catholic that becomes a Freemason by excommunication, automatic excommunication. By the way, I'm sorry for the interruption, but just to explain something for a bit to all non-Catholics watching this. In the canon law of the Catholic Church, excommunication is a form of censure. In the formal sense of the term, Excommunication includes being barred not only from the sacraments, but also from the fellowship of Christian baptism. The principal and severest censure, excommunication presupposes guilt, and being the most serious penalty that the Catholic Church can inflict, it supposes a grave offense. The excommunicated person is considered by Catholic ecclesiastical authority as an exile from the Church, for a time at least. And Padre Pio, when he was approached by a penitent who was a Freemason, told that penitent, and we know this not because Padre Pio revealed the confession, which is a sin, but the penitent shared this with others after the confession. He said that Padre Pio told me, unless I renounce Freemasonry right here, he will not absolve me. So Freemasonry, because it has as its purpose the destruction of the Christian church and its mores, and also the downthrow of the papacy and the elimination of the Eucharist, replacing it with Satan as the god, the church has condemned all ties of Christian Catholics with Freemasonry. Now I'd like to share something from the actor John Voigt. I've really enjoyed watching some of his works before, but there's one particular interview that he did really change the way I look at him now. During the interview, he voiced his concerns about the appearance of the devil in Hollywood at the moment. Look, uh, you know, we, we've seen an enormous, in, in the time of my life, I've seen an enormous change in this country, and it's all been quite uh, disturbing. Uh, the congressional record of 1963, in the 60s were the time I was uh, very active trying to get my tools to be an actor. Uh, the, uh, the agenda of the KGB was listed as uh, we're going to divide the United States, divide the citizens of the United States uh, through uh, the press, through the schools, take God out of the, out of the schools, and... Uh, uh, and divide the country by race and age and gender. And uh, they certainly have accomplished this in this rather short period of time. Uh, they, they have, uh, and, and, it's, and it's drifted toward, and what is, the, what is, the, what is Marxism uh, based on? What is their uh, engine that, that, that gives them guidance? It's certainly not God. Yeah. So we have a lot of uh, atheism that's... Uh, uh, coming forth, and now we have an amazing, you know, uh, appearance of, uh, of, of Satan in our community now. And I particularly like what he said here during an interview with Tucker Carlson. I am really afraid. I'm afraid of offending God, right? Because God is everything. God is love. God is, you know... All these beautiful things, beauty, everything. And I'm going to 
how can I live up to that? I need a lot of help. But uh, I think that's the fear of the Lord. It keeps you on the track. You know what I'm saying? You, it, it's, a, it's not a, a fear of, uh, you know, attacked by anything. It's a fear of offending, fear of not living up to, fear of doing the wrong thing, you know, of making a terrible mistake. So all, all of that, you know. Looking back at some of the things that I've shared for the past few videos, including this one in regards to the work of the devil, I think it's a great idea to share what Father Josie Fortea said about the devil and his demons and how they're going to continue trying to lead us away from God. What do demons do with their time in the world of demons like that of people? Some do one thing and others do different things. Demons, of course, cannot build houses, grow food, construct machines, nor do any of the things human beings spend so much time on. Most of the time, demons occupy themselves with going deeper into the world of knowledge and having relationships among themselves and in tempting people. The intellectual world is such vast world that the demons occupy themselves in it completely like us. In a university, for example, there can be hundreds of professors, with each one specializing in some branch of knowledge. Hundreds of professors and deans work hours daily in a university, and all this work and activity produces just one thing, knowledge. The same thing happens in the world of the angelic spirits. Relationships among pure spirits may not seem important, but the demons have real complex social relationships. And these relationships are not based merely on knowledge, but also on the pleasure of communicating with one another and helping each other tempt humans. Two different societies were forming at that time, the society of demons and the society of angels. Um, demons were going worse and worse. Angels were going better and better. At the beginning, they were just angelic natures with no love at the time of the creation. In the probation, they become good. They become with love, with faith, with hope. Some of them even holy. Some of them, they fight very hard to make many bad angels to return. The same we see on earth happen on that moment in that society that was dividing into the same. The angelic world was very variated, you say variated, variado, was very diverse, variated, with many possibilities, because we are on earth, it's hard for us to understand how an angel may do so many things as we, but they can, they can. And um, finally, God put an end to the, to the time of probation, or, finally, some of them, they finish with a definitive will to maintain his choice, their choice. And the other ones, finally, they had a definitive uh, will to maintain his choice for God, for God. Those good ones were introduced in the presence of God. Perhaps together, perhaps each one in the moment God wanted. But they were introduced not in a place. God is not in a place. They were introduced in a new state. The state of uh, seeing the substance of God, the Holy Trinity, face to face. Uh, from that moment, there was no possibility to go back bar. The other ones went apart. Uh, I insist, uh, we don't speak in terms of places, it's in terms of a state. The state of many of them was completely far from God. They changed themselves into monsters, as the other angels changed into spiritual beauties. Supernatural beauties. Well, that is all for the video this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here again with all of us. And hopefully you've learned a lot from the video this time as well. If there's any suggestion or feedback, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, for those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation in the description box below and from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for your continuous support, contribution, and prayer. Until the next one, stay safe. 
Stay healthy and God bless you.